Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for another video. Today rounding up some recent Chelsea news including Kai Havertz, N'Golo Kante and a new contract for Tino Andrew. But before we get into any of that, I want to ask you guys if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you never miss an upload. Also hit that like button if you're enjoying the content because it helps out the channel as well. But let's get into it firstly with Kai Havertz. Chelsea's interest in Kai Havertz is legitimate, it's real and this was reported yesterday by Jacob Steinberg in The Guardian here. Havertz, rated as one of the best young players in the Bundesliga, is being pursued by several top clubs and Chelsea are expected to face intense competition from Bayern Munich, Man United and Real Madrid. Arranging a deal for Havertz is unlikely to be easy with reports in Germany suggesting Leverkusen could hold out for as much as £89 million for a player who has scored five goals in four games since the Bundesliga resumed last month. Chelsea have held early talks with Leverkusen and would hope to negotiate a fee in the region of £17 million. Chelsea, whose shortlist also includes the Brentford winger side Ben Rama, will need to sell players to enable heavy spend on Werner, Zias, Chirwell and Havertz. Then Jacob Steinberg refers to players that could leave from the current Chelsea squad, which is Emerson, Michi Batshuayi, Jorginho, Ross Barkley and Marcus Alonso. It's another report that raises eyebrows and it's another report which I think really confirms that Chelsea are now starting to pick up the pace in terms of transfer business. I don't know if it's because not only has the Bundesliga resumed, but, you know, football is starting to get back to normal ways in terms of, you know, Premier League restarting next week and Chelsea, of course, starting to play games and hoping to finish the 1920 season that now players returning to Cobham more frequently, you know, sort of stuff being back in business, basically, maybe has helped this. But we know Chelsea are looking to be serious. Now, Kai Havertz, a bit like Jadon Sancho, being one of the most coveted young players in European football, in world football, you're going to have competition for that, not only from the, the giants of Bayern Munich and Real Madrid, Madrid, but also Man United. And we know Man United's interest in Jadon Sancho alongside Chelsea. I look at Man United's midfield, you know, they've, they're going to keep Paul Pogba probably because no one wants to buy him currently and no one can probably afford to buy Paul Pogba at the moment. And they've just spent 60 million in January on Bruno Fernandes, a player who's really improved that area of the pitch for them. So would they sign both Jadon Sancho and Kai Havertz in the same window? It could happen. You know, Man United do have the investment potentially to do that, but I think that they probably maybe go after Jadon Sancho um, and that may just help Chelsea secure Kai Havertz instead. Um, I want to talk about Chelsea's midfield because I, I've constantly said this, it's probably the most used word I've said on this channel when referring to Chelsea's midfield. It's stacked, it absolutely is, and there's a lot of options in there. Now, as Jacob Steinberg referred to, not in terms of midfielders, but I, I do think if we want to sign Kai Havertz, at least one or two midfielders are going to have to leave Chelsea. It's pretty simple, whether on loan or in a permanent move. I think, you know, Ross Barkley comes to mind instantly there, even though I think he can be a real useful squad player for Chelsea. Marcus Alonso, you know, I think of high wages. I remember the report about Roman Abramovich's investment back in January, and Marcus Alonso was named as one of the highest players in terms of wages. That could really help Chelsea in that sense, um, getting rid of Marcus Alonso on the wage bill and as well Emerson as well I can't see both Emerson and Marcus Alonso leaving because I still feel Chelsea will only buy one uh, left back this summer but it depends on you know which one was to leave first and which one maybe Lampard wants to keep um, you have heard constantly that Marcus Alonso if a good offer comes in for him will be allowed to leave so then Emerson could stay Michy Batshuayi I think will leave this summer I think Chelsea could get a good fee for him as well still at a decent age we know the interest in Jorginho from Juventus and that could bring a really hefty fee with it whether Lampard wants to lose a player who I think he feels is a very good leader in his squad we're not entirely sure and I think Jorginho as I've said before as a fan of him I think he can still be an essential cog in Lampard's system but the one thing I want to stress is flexibility Frank Lampard wants flexibility at Chelsea it's something he constantly reiterates you know stuff he says constantly flexibility is something he talks about I remember an interview we did with Gary Lineker a really extensive one I think you should go and listen to back in I believe it was like November December time before Christmas where he was talking about Chelsea talking about being a manager at Chelsea, how he'd found the first few months. And he talked about wanting to be flexible, wanting the team to adapt. And we've seen that in what he's done, his own actions, you know, his actions speak loud on his words. And in his actions, he's changed the formation, sometimes changed the formation in games. He will move players around for certain games. Mason Mount has not only been utilized as a central midfielder, a can, but also as a left winger at times, an inverted winger at times. And he's done this with several players, which is why a player like Timo Werner is so interesting for Chelsea, a bit like Hakim Ziyech, because both of those players can be played in a variety of positions. Yes, I think most dominantly, I think we believe that Ziyech will like 
likely play on the right wing, a right of some kind of attack, and uh, maybe Werner on the left of some kind of attack, but also can play centrally as a forward. And Havertz looks similar to me. He's in a similar mould. He can play in a variety of positions, as we've seen since Leverkusen have started playing again. He's played as a centre forward. Chelsea need goals in a centre forward position, and Havertz could offer that. I think I'm going to move on to the fact that I think that, you know, signing Havertz, signing uh, Werner and signing Ziyech, I think could limit Chelsea's spend if you're someone that thinks that Chelsea desperately need to spend in defensive areas like centre-back and like left-back. That could limit that. I mean, signing Kai Havertz for a record fee, would we then be able to sign Ben Shurwell as well in the same window? We know Roman is very serious this, this summer and he wants to invest heavily, but two marquee signings, I mean, Havertz would be the second marquee signing. And I've said this before, I think there are more essential areas than just central midfield. Yes, grabbing one of the hottest prospects in world football would be a massive, another massive statement by Chelsea. But, you know, longer term, you're looking at the the health and balance of the squad. Do we need another central midfielder? Can we get that creativity, goals and productivity from giving Mason Mount more time from Ruben Loftus-Cheek returning to the first team? You know, the creativity of Hakim Ziyech as well. I just wonder whether Havertz still for me should be top priority. I feel like left back for me has always been a higher priority. And if you were to ask me right now, you know, where are you going to spend more money, left back or central midfield? I'm still going to go to left back. As excited I am about Kai Havertz, that's just my personal preference. And I'd be a little bit concerned if Chelsea went all out for Kai Havertz and then didn't invest. Now, we do know about Taglafico as a backup option. So we could sign Havertz and then Taglafico could be the other option, which I think would be a superb uh, backup option to Ben Chilwell. Absolutely no complaints there. Um, and then I think really there you're pleasing everyone in that transfer. I mean, that would be a miraculous transfer window. I even think, you know, Werner and Chilwell and maybe not Havertz for me is still a very good window by Chelsea uh, by all accounts, especially in the current climate. Um, so please let me know your opinions on Kai Havertz. We're going to have to see early talks at the moment. Um, I think there'll be more competition, increased competition as Kai Havertz continues to impress in the Bundesliga for Bayer Leverkusen. But I think that flexibility for me is a key thing. And I think it's something you should look out for, for Frank Lampard and his scouting and, and the sort of players Lampard wants. He wants players that can not only play in one position, can play in a variety of positions, can play in a variety of formations, very modern, very adaptable and very flexible. And just to touch on some couple more stories before I wrap up today's video, in the same report by Jacob Steinberg, mostly about Kai Havertz, he mentioned in N'Golo Kante and that N'Golo Kante has returned to contract training raising hopes he will be available for selection when the Premier League resumes on the 17th of June. Chelsea's first game back is at Aston Villa on the 21st of June and it is unclear whether Kante will be fit to take part in that game but this is fundamentally great news. Um, the more players Frank Lampard has for selection the better especially N'Golo Kante and as we're talking about the investment and players coming in and you're sort of trying to look at and trying to guess as best as you can what next season's formation is going to look like what that lineup will look like. I feel more and more like N'Golo Kante, a player who weeks back we were talking about maybe doubtful if he would leave this summer, I still feel could be an essential cog for Chelsea. Um, maybe in a little bit of a deeper role, maybe if Hakim Ziyech is given more license to roam, and especially Rhys James on that right side, that right side becomes much more proactive. Lampard this season, I've always felt like, and I think obviously his fitness, I think has been a key element in this. If N'Golo Kante is fit for the rest of the season, plays a lot of minutes, and then is fit for next season, you get a different player. We've already seen that in brief spells under Lampard, and of course before that. Um, but I think that for me, Lampard at times with Kante has looked a little bit confused, and I think some of that has been the uncertainty around formation, maybe the young players in the team, what Lampard wants his team to do as he's been learning about his squad this season. I think it's been sort of a mixture sometimes between what N'Golo Kante you're getting are you still getting the same Kante under Sarri that's a bit more progressive that wants to get forward help out the attack or a bit more of the Conte type Kante that is a little bit more defensive and reverts a little bit deeper in sort of a two I think that's still something that maybe Frank needs to work out but um, I think this is a positive Frank Lampard having key midfielders which is a massive area in Chelsea's team back fit, I think are going to be essential. So we can start to see the likes of Jorginho, N'Golo Kante and Kovacic play together. Kante, Jorginho and Loftus-Cheek play together potentially. Mount, you know, all those combinations we can think of. Billy Gilmore and N'Golo Kante playing in the same, same midfield. And lastly, the great news and confirmation that Tino Andrian has signed a new five-year contract with Chelsea. Um, there was competition apparently from rival clubs. Um, we heard about this weeks ago that there were discussions, advanced talks about a new contract. Now it's been confirmed. I think it's just great 
great news pinning down the future of Tino Andrian, exciting player. I was talking about Kai Havertz being flexible. I feel like Tino Andrian fits that mold as well, could potentially play very much in the heart of central midfield, but could potentially play as well in a front three later down in his career and being a really dangerous player in the final third. I think he'll get that low move next season, which I think is realistic at this point, especially if Chelsea are going to invest on more midfielders. I think Andrian is probably best suited to a loan, maybe in a championship to really bulk him up, maybe get him that physical men's football that you can get that the likes of Mason Mount has prospered off and Conor Gallagher this season. But, you know, Mason Mount went on loan to Vitesse first. So maybe Andrian could go to a foreign club first, get that experience on the continent and then come back to Chelsea um, and maybe improve there and get first team minutes under Frank Lampard. Um, but I think it's just good tying down the futures of these young players, I think is essential for the future of Chelsea. And hopefully one day Andrian will be a regular in the first team squad. Let me know your opinions on this news and the future of Tino Andrian in the comments below. But thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you did enjoy it, hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you never miss an upload. Follow me on Twitter at Son of Chelsea. Have a great day and I'll see you again. <laughs>